Tristram Hunt. Mr Speaker, sir, what today's Ofsted report exposes is that the government's free school programme has become a dangerous free-for-all, an out-of-control ideological experiment that has closed a school, leaving 400 children losing an entire week of learning. It is a devastating blow to the Education Secretary's flagship policy. It reveals that pupils have been failed on every possible measure, and parents will want to know why the Education Secretary has allowed this to happen. Contrary to what the Minister said, in a pre-registration report in July 2012, Ofsted deemed the school to be failing to meet basic child protection standards even before it was opened. Why did Ministers not act on these concerns before signing a funding agreement for the school? Yeah, yeah. Why have ministers allowed a school to be run by large numbers of unqualified staff? Why have ministers sanctioned quote, dangerous levels of safety and behaviour? Why have ministers allowed children with special educational needs to be left to struggle? In a city where every child needs to be supported and educated to the highest possible level, the Education Secretary has sacrificed learning for ideology. Yeah. Mr Speaker, it is not, it is not just, it is not just Al Medina School, it is not just Al Medina School which is dysfunctional. It is the Education Secretary's free schools policy. Yeah. Minister of State. Mr Speaker, it didn't last very long, did it, the support of the Labour Party for free schools. I don't know how the Honourable Gentleman has the nerve to come to this House, Mr Speaker. On Sunday, on Sunday he was going around the television studios and telling us that Labour was shifting its position on free schools. Here he is, Mr Speaker, on Sunday. We will keep free schools going, he said. Labour will shift its position on free schools. Within, within the same set of DfE press cuttings, as the Honourable Gentleman was announcing he was shifting his position in favour of free schools, we find this headline, Mr Speaker, that Labour now plain to rein in free schools. It is complete and utter incoherence from the Honourable Gentleman, and he should be ashamed. Now let me respond. Now let me respond in detail to every single point that the honourable gentleman made, every single serious point, which will not take me very long. Let us let us go back over what has actually happened in this school and have a look at the scrutiny that it's been subjected to. Firstly, this school had, has opened in September 2012. It had a pre-registration report by Ofsted. As all of these schools do, Mr Speaker, this is not something sensational. And in that pre-registration report, Ofsted set down a number of requirements that it wanted to see before the school opened. And in advance of the school opening, the Trust went through all of those with the lead contact in the DfE. It produced a certificate to show that they had done the safeguarding training. It produced a certificate to show they had done the first aid training. It produced a certificate authorised, and the Honourable Gentleman ought to listen to this by the Director of Planning and Transportation at Derby City oh, Council oh, saying that? that the building was fit for occupation. Yeah. After that, Mr Speaker, the DfE sent in its own adviser to the school just two months after it was opening and saw good progress that at that stage the school was making. In July uh, of this year, Mr Speaker, we did become aware of concerns about equalities and management issues at the school, and we acted immediately on that. We established an EFA financial investigation into the school. We sent our advisers into the school. We asked Ofsted to bring forward its inspection, and that inspection has now taken place. And Lord Nash has already, prior to receiving that inspection, written to the school, setting out precisely the actions that they will take and making clear that their funding will not uh, continue unless they address those things. And Mr Speaker, why doesn't the uh, Shadow Secretary of State, if he's so supportive of free schools, why does he not have the responsibility to put this failure of this school into context? 75 per cent 
of the three schools that have opened since the beginning have now been rated good and outstanding by Ofsted. That is a higher proportion, Mr Speaker, than local authority schools. We didn't hear that, did we, from the Honourable Gentleman opposite? And when we come to complacency, which I think is the allegation the Honourable Gentleman is making, can I remind him of the record of the government, the last Labour government that he's defending? At the end of their period in office, Mr Speaker, 8% of schools in this country, over 1,500, were rated as inadequate, many of them for years, many of them with no action. The Honourable Gentleman, by focusing on one school in which we are taking action, is failing the, com- the schools in the country, including under his period of government, where little action was taken. Mr Speaker, I think that people listening to these exchanges and listening to the Honourable Gentleman and reflecting on what he said on Sunday and how he has stood on his head today will see nothing other than total and utter opportunism and shambles from Labour's education policy.